In today's video, I'm going to be looking back at all of the drafts over the past decade and determining the top 5 steals from the last decade and the top 5 busts. If you guys have been an OG to my channel, I've been watching it for a long time. You know, back when I started the channel, I had a series where I did a redraft of every draft from 2010 up until 2015 and then stopped it because it would be a little bit hard just to evaluate talent of, of players that were in the league for not a very long time. But today, I'm going to be coming back to this a little bit. And and you guys know if you watched my channel from a while back when I did those redrafts that I love looking back at past drafts and analyzing them. And they really fascinate me because it really shows you how hard it is as scouts to evaluate talent at such a young age because there's always huge busts and big steals in drafts and players that are drafted so high and turn up so bad and players that are drafted in the second round and way later than the lottery sometimes and turn out to be some of the best players in the NBA. So I'm really going to focus in on those busts and steals today and look over the last 10 years and determine the top five biggest busts and the top five biggest steals so before we get started if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos and so that we can continue that road to 1k today i actually hit 600 subscribers as i'm recording this video so thank you all for that let's continue that up and get to 1k by the summer so with that being said let's get started with that video now so let's start off with the bust so we can get the negative out of the way here. I've got two honorable mentions who just missed out on the top five. I've got Evan Turner, who is the second overall pick in the 2010 NBA draft, and ended up having a pretty underwhelming NBA career, especially for a top two pick in the 2010 draft. But there were times throughout his career where he was a decent role player, so I decided to leave him off the list. And then we've got Derek Williams, who is the second overall pick in 2011. And yeah, not Darren Williams, the point guard who's really good at passing at times throughout his career. We've got Derek Williams, who you've probably never heard of, and quite frankly, it's because he didn't do anything throughout his NBA career, and it was a complete bust as well, but luckily for him, he wasn't bad enough to make the top five of this list. So at number five for the top five busts of the decade, I've got Dragon Bender, and Dragon Bender is one of the biggest busts that we've ever seen. He was picked fourth overall in the 2016 NBA draft, and he makes this list just because he never really blossomed into the player that people expected him to be. For his career, he averaged 5 points per game, and it's not like he didn't get an opportunity or anything, because teams tried to develop him and give him time, and he's actually averaged 20 minutes per game throughout his career so far, and I mean, there is a chance that he could make a comeback since he was only drafted in 2016, but it doesn't look likely because of how bad he's been so far in his career, and it's really disappointing too. This draft was looking really good up until Bender was picked. The top 3 picks were Ben Simmons, Brandon Ingram, and Jalen Brown, who are arguably all top 30 players in the league today, and then Bender was picked fourth, and he's a top five bust of the decade. At number four on the list, I've got Thomas Robinson. And if you don't know who Thomas Robinson is, I don't blame you at all because that's the exact reason why he's on this list. He was a complete bust who was picked fifth overall in the 2012 draft and was a traditional big man who never really blossomed into what people thought he was going to be. And because of this, he has to be a top five bust of the decade. He never even got any really consistent minutes in the NBA because of how he never developed into what people expected him to be and turned into a massive bust. And the worst part about it here for the Sacramento Kings, which was the team who selected him fifth overall, was the next pick in the draft was Damian Lillard. Yeah. At number three on the list, I've got Wesley Johnson, who in 2010 was selected fourth overall by the Minnesota Timberwolves, and with the next pick, DeMarcus Cousins was selected by the Kings, so I guess the Kings really did hit on that draft pick, and also Paul George was selected in this draft at 10th overall. And if you haven't heard of Wesley Johnson, again, I don't blame you at all. Pretty much no one knows who he is because of how much of a massive bust that he is, and because of how he was picked fourth overall and never really turned into anything special at all. For his career, he's shooting 40 percent from the field and if this name does seem familiar to you it's probably because his career defining moment is getting his ankle snatched by James Harden yeah that guy lying over the floor over there that's Wesley Johnson so unfortunately for him he's got his ankles taken by James Harden and is a top three bust of the decade at number two, I've got Michael Kidd Gilchrist, and MKG is famous for coming into the league and being super hyped by scouts because they thought he was very athletic and that he had a good jump shot, and ended up shooting 27% for three for his career, and had the wonkiest jump shot that we've ever seen. And that's the only thing I've remembered this guy for, is how he's an insane bust and how his jump shot is extremely weird. And there were actually two seasons in 2015 and 16 where he did average double figures, and looked like he was slowly blossoming 
turning into the player that some people expected him to be, but ended up getting out of the league in six years and now isn't even in the NBA. Again, he was picked second overall in the 2012 draft, and the pick after him was Bradley Beal, and as I mentioned also with the Thomas Robinson bust situation, the sixth pick in this draft was Damian Lillard. So the Charlotte Hornets ended up going with MKG, who is famous for having the wonkiest jump shot ever instead of Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard. And for number one, I've got Anthony Bennett. Obviously, I don't need to explain my ranking here, and I'm not going to dwell on how big of a bust Anthony Bennett is. I'm just going to say that he was the first overall pick in 2013, as we know, and Giannis was also in this draft, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Alright, so let's move on to the steals now. Since I'm done making fun of the bus, it's time to move on to making fun of the scouts that slept on these players that turned into amazing players and the biggest steals of the decade. I've got four honorable mentions that just missed out on the top five. I've got Chris Middleton, who was picked 39th overall in 2012 and has now blossomed into a top 30 player in the NBA in most people's eyes, and a guy that consistently shoots around 50, 40, 90 throughout his career. We've got Pascal Siakam, who was picked 26th. 7th overall in 2016 and has turned into one of the best players from that draft class, an NBA champion and the most improved player. We've got Rudy Gobert who was picked 27th overall in 2013 and has turned into one of if not the best defensive player in the NBA. And then we've got Malcolm Brogdon who was picked 36th overall in 2016 and has now turned into a top 10 point guard in the NBA. At number 5 on the list, I've got Draymond Green, who in 2012 slipped all the way to the second round and was picked 35th overall by the Golden State Warriors. And I considered opposing Chris Middleton here instead because of his scoring, but Draymond's overall impact throughout his career has been insane, and he's helped contribute a major, major part to the Warriors' three championships that they've won in this decade. He's one of the best defenders of all time, and while he claims himself to be the greatest defender of all time, I think we can agree that he isn't, but he's still definitely up there. He's one of the greatest playmakers we've ever seen, does a great job of setting screens, has great awareness out there on the court, and is an amazing passer, an amazing rebounder, and can occasionally drop 10 points a night as well on the offensive end of the floor when it comes to scoring, but because of his overall impact, especially on the defensive end of the floor, and how he dropped all the way to the second round, he's a top 5 steal of this decade. At number 4, I've got Jimmy Butler, who was selected with the last pick in the first round of the 2011 draft, 30th overall by the Chicago Bulls, and has blossomed into one of the best two-way players that we've seen in the NBA, consistently flirting around, especially with the last few years of being a top 10 player in the NBA, and we saw last year how he led his Miami Heat team all the way to the NBA Finals and almost an NBA Championship, and for this being done by a guy who was selected 30th, 30th overall is in insane. And overall, Jimmy Butler, as as we know, is an all-defensive caliber player, is one of the clutchest players in the league and one of the better scorers in the league when he gets hot, is a very good playmaker, and because of how he's just all around an amazing player, and as I mentioned, consistently being close to being a top 10 player in the NBA, he's easily a top 5 steal of this decade. At number 3, I've got Giannis, who was selected 15th overall in 2013, and Giannis could easily be first on this list because he wasn't even expected to go in the first round, and some mock drafts didn't even have him going in the draft at all. And the pick by the Milwaukee Bucks here was completely unexpected, and you obviously have to give tons of credit to their scouting because they got a two-time MVP and a defensive player of the year as a guy who wasn't even expected to go in the first round. He wasn't expected to go in the first round so much that David Stern didn't even know how to pronounce his name up there on the stage, and Giannis would easily rank number one on this list if he was picked in the second round. But he went 15th overall, and as I mentioned, has now won two MVPs, has been one of the most dominant transition players that we've ever seen in the NBA, and is a defensive player of the year. At number two on the list, I've got Kawhi Leonard, who was also selected 15th overall in the 2011 draft, and the funniest part about this one is how Kawhi was selected 15th overall by the Indiana Pacers and then traded to the Spurs for George Hill and it just speaks to how much it's so hard to evaluate talent at such a young age and how people had no clue what Kawhi was going to turn into and now he's turned into in my opinion a top 25 player of all time and really one of the most underappreciated players of all time. If you haven't already checked out my video about Kawhi and why I think he's extremely underappreciated be sure to do that now I'll put a card up on the right hand side of the screen so you can go ahead and check that out 
out as well. But it goes without saying that Kawhi is one of the most amazing two-way players that we've ever seen. He's won two finals MVPs along with a defensive player of the year, has consistently shot close to 50-40-90 for his career as a small forward, and was slept on so much that he didn't even make the lottery of this draft. And because of this, he's the second best steal of this decade in my opinion. And at number one on the list for the biggest steal of the 2010s decade, I've got Nikola Jokic. And Jokic is probably the frontrunner for MVP right now in 2021, is averaging 27 points per game and is one of the most unique scores in the NBA. He's shooting over 55% from the field, over 40% from three, and over 85% from the line as a center, which is obviously absolutely insane. And in my opinion, he's the very best playmaker in the NBA. And all of this being said, and he was taken 41st in the 2014 NBA draft. Jokic might go down as the biggest steal of all time. I don't think there's ever been a second round pick to win the MVP. And you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but off the top of my head, I'm pretty sure there's no second round pick that's won the MVP. And 40 teams passed up on him in the 2014 draft, and now he's sitting here in 2021 about to win the MVP. Giannis and Kawhi have had better careers than Jokic up to this point, but the fact that Jokic was picked 41st overall makes him easily the biggest steal of this decade. So there you have it, those are the top 5 biggest busts and the top 5 biggest steals of the 2010s decade so far. As I mentioned, it's really fascinating to look back at past drafts and see how many players that were picked so high turned out to be bad and how many players that were slept on turned out to be so good, especially when you see MVP caliber players like Giannis, Kawhi, and Jokic fall back in the draft and then just completely prove everyone wrong once they get into the NBA. It's cool to see, it's also pretty fun sometimes to just make fun of the busts and how they turned out. But overall, this was a really fun video to record. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. And if you're new, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. And I'll see you all in the next video.